Going to call to order the Finance Committee meeting for December the 7th, 2020. Before we get into our agenda items, I'll yield the floor at this time to Mayor Marlin Coleman for a few presentations. Let me say good evening to all of us on tonight. Uh, the first presentation we have is to recognize the December Employee of the Month, who is Robin Orman. Robin Orman started her employment with the City of Muskogee in November of 2017 as the Executive Assistant to the Assistant City Manager and is currently in that same position. She has reported to Mike Stewart and Gary Garvin. She has gained so much knowledge about the daily operations of the City of Muskogee from both her bosses and feels deeply privileged to work for both of them. Alongside her job at the city, Robin currently is building her dream of being a successful entrepreneur with Airborne, a healthy wellness company. Her motto is, everyone has an invisible sign on their forehead that says, make me feel important. Robin lives in Fort Gibson with her husband, Tim. They have five kids, 13 grandchildren. Robin's hobbies include walking, reading, spending time with her family, and mentoring her airborne team. It has been my privilege uh, as the mayor to have worked with Robin. Uh, Robin fills in when Marsha Wiseman, the executive assistant to the mayor and city manager are out. And when Robin first started filling in, I was very worried because Marsha Wiseman knows I'm a lot to deal with. <laughs> but I didn't know how well Robin would take that. Uh, but Robin handles it very, very well. She's extremely professional. Uh, and she's always willing to do everything she can to make the city of Muskogee look great. She could not be here tonight, but why don't we give a round of applause to Robin Orman. <laughs> it's always my privilege to recognize when either our uh, law enforcement officers retire or when they promote, because as many of us know, we don't live in a generation now where police officers are the most popular position to be in. When I was growing up as a child, we were fortunate in high school, there was an officer friendly program. And so our first experience with law enforcement was always through coloring books. It was always through them playing ball with us. It was always through them uh, showing acts of kindness towards our family. And so tonight, we recognize two of our police officers here in the city of Muskogee for promoting. The first one I will recognize is Lieutenant Jeremy Jenkins. He was hired in July of 2003 and promoted to the rank of sergeant in January 2017. He holds an advanced CLEAT certification with almost 1,200 hours of continuing education to include 120-hour course on leadership and police organizations, and he has been trained as a basic EMT. He is a field training officer for new recruits and assisted in revamping the Muskogee Police Department field training program. Jeremy was also part of the committee that rewrote the current Muskogee Police Department policy and procedural manual. He is trained in advanced accident reconstruction and attends the annual Oklahoma Highway Safety Conference. He is also the current FOP president and has been elected by his peers to attend the annual state FOP conference the last five years and also attends the biannual national FOP conference. Help me recognize and help me to recognize tonight the promotion of Jeremy Jenkins. Jeremy, you can, uh, you don't mind, you and your family come up, we'll take a photo op to help recognize you on tonight. The next officer we will recognize tonight is Stephen Warrior. He was hired in September of 2014 and has over 10 years of law enforcement experience. He is a member of the Muskogee Police Department Special Operations Team. Stephen has been a field training officer for new recruits for several years and assisted in revamping the Muskogee Police Department field training program. Stephen is a nationally certified drug recognition expert instructor and is an advanced roadside impaired driving enforcement instructor. 
He has trained law enforcement agencies throughout Northeast and Central Oklahoma on DUI enforcement. Stephen has been recognized by Mothers Against Drunk Driving for his DUI enforcement efforts. Help me celebrate the promotion of Officer Stephen Warrior. Tonight is the night we would have also recognized the retirement of newly elected sheriff Andy Simmons. Andy Simmons had worked for the police department of Muskogee for 24 years. He followed in his father's footsteps to occupy uh, that position. I don't need many notes to discuss Andy because I consider him a very good friend. We are honored and privileged in the city of Muskogee to see one of our own officers have advanced to the position of sheriff. We look forward to the uh, years to come working with him in partnership with the city and the county um, when we have an opportunity when he is present We will do as been our new custom when a law enforcement officer retires from the city of Muskogee Give him a key to the city and all of the proper Recognition that he deserves he could not be here tonight, but why don't you join me in celebrating the retirement of Andy Simmons? Thank you, Mayor Coleman, for the recognitions. At this time, we're going to our agenda item for tonight. Agenda item number one, please. Consider approval of Finance Committee minutes of November 16, 2020. After reviewing the minutes, are there any corrections or additions to our minutes? Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve our minutes. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. Item number one passes. Item number two, please. Consider approval of resolution number 2837, declaring a parcel of property, more particularly described in the resolution, as surplus to the needs of the city and authorize the conveyance of said property or take other necessary action. Mr. Garvin? Uh, Mr. Chairman, here with the committee. Where do you see that? We received application from Salvador Coronado to purchase a parcel property located within the 200 block of South C Street. The parcel is zoned residential. It consists of 2,505 square feet. Since it is less than the 7,200 square feet, it is not considered a buildable lot. Since it's not a buildable lot, it can only be obtained by the, one of the abutting property owners. Uh, the applicant owns the property at 228 South C, which abuts this property. He plans on expanding his existing yard. So staff recommends approval of resolution number 2837, declaring the property surplus and author authorizing the conveyance of the property to the applicant. Be glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Do we have any questions for Mr. Garvin? Move for approval. Second. Have a second? Second. second. I have a motion and a second to approve this agenda item. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. Item number two passes. Item number three, please. Consider approval of resolution number 2838, declaring a parcel of property, more particularly described in the resolution, as surplus to the needs of the city, and authorize the conveyance of said property or take other necessary action. Mr. Garvin? Uh, Cedric Brown submitted an application to purchase this parcel. It's located within the 500 block of North 21st Street. The parcel is owned residential. It contains 8,950 square feet. Since this property is, exceeds the 7,200 minimum square footage, it is considered a buildable lot. Since it is a buildable lot, it is required to be posted for 10 days to see if any other uh, citizens want to bid on the property. Uh, Mr. Brown was the sole bidder. His amount was $363. So staff recommends approval of resolution 2838, declaring the property surplus and authorizing the conveyance to, to Mr. Brown in the amount of $363. Move for approval. Second. second. I have a motion and a second to approve this agenda item. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. 
Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number three passes. <laughs> Item number four, please. Consider approval of resolution number 2839, declaring a parcel of property, more particularly described in the resolution, as surplus to the needs of the city, and authorize the conveyance of said property or take other necessary action. Mr. Garvin. Uh, Logan Miller submitted an application. He wants to purchase the property within the 1000 block of South G Street. Uh, this parcel is also zoned residential. It contains 8,400 square feet. Uh, it is a buildable lot, so it was posted the 10 days. Mr. Miller was the sole bidder. His bid amount was $363. He actually owns the property next door and wants to expand his yard. So I'd recommend approval of resolution 2839 and authorize the conveyance to Mr. Miller in the amount of 363. Any questions for Mr. Garvin? Move for approval. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve this agenda item. Roll call, please. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. Item number four passes. Item number five, please. Consider approval of resolution number 2840, declaring a parcel of property, more particularly described in the resolution, as surplus to the needs of the city, and authorize the conveyance of said property, or take other necessary action. Mr. Garvin? Uh, Timothy Carson submitted application for this parcel. It's located within the 300 block of Dayton Street. The parcel is zoned multifamily residential. It contains 5,336 square feet. Uh, it is less than the 7,200, so it is not a buildable lot. And again, it has to be a purchase by an abutting property owner. Uh, the applicant uh, is currently rehabbing the apartments that are located on the 400 block of North C Street, 400 North C Street. Uh, and this property does abut the property uh, that he is requesting. So he wants to uh, expand the apartment complex, maybe add some additional parking. Uh, staff recommends approval of resolution 2840 and it would authorize the, or for the authorizing the conveyance of the property to Mr. Carson. Be glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve this agenda item. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number five passes. Item number six, please. <clears throat> Consider approval of City Council Policy 3-3-7, emergency paid sick leave, or take other necessary action. Ms. Pluckett. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, um, this policy is an update of our current administrative policy, um, which applies to employees for COVID sick leave. Um, our current policy in place right now is if an employee is quarantined or isolated, they receive 80 hours of leave. Um, this revised council policy would apply to employees if they are receiving um, a diagnosis of COVID-19, um, they're being treated medically for COVID-19, or if they have a positive test. Um, and it's regardless of the symptoms that are experienced because of course some employees can be, or people um, in general can be um, asymptomatic. Um, this policy would apply to full-time employees, part-time employees and variable hour employees, um, regardless of how long they have been employed. Um, and it would, it would go back until April the 1st of 2020 and it would be um, approved until rescinded by the city council. Um, we can't guarantee that COVID is gonna end on December the 31st. Um, so we also want to make these benefits available um, after the end of the year um, and extend what the federal, uh, federal laws are um, currently have in place. In addition, if we have any CDC changes or guidance, um, we would automatically update our policy uh, and we are asking for approval. I'm happy to answer any questions. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve this agenda item. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Deputy <coughs> Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. Thank you. Item number six passes, and with that passing, that is our final item for our finance committee. Welcome to the Public Works Committee of December 7th, 2020. Uh, item number one. Consider approval of Public Works Committee minutes of November 16th, 2020. Move for approval. Second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. 
Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Jarek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. And the motion passes. Item number two. Consider approval of the final plat of Lawler Legacy Edition consisting of four lots and one block on 4.27 acres located along North 35th and Cork Street or take other necessary action. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, committee members, this is a request for a final plat from Brett and Samantha Lawler. We did approve the preliminary plat November 9th. Since that time, they have removed the items on the preliminary plat to meet the guidelines for the final plat. And this will then allow them to do residential development on one of the lots and have uh, the three others available for future residential development. Um, staff and Planning Commission recommend approval. Be happy to answer any questions. Uh, move for approval. Second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. And the motion passes. Item number three. Consider approval of change order number one to contract with Roscon LLC in the amount of $19,888.45 for 43rd Street, 45th Street, and Hancock and Chandler Road Street projects collectively EDA project number 08-01-05030 or take other necessary action. Mr. Stewart. Yes, Chairman and Committee. This uh, project is about 80% complete, uh, I want to report. And uh, as we did uh, told you in our kickoff meeting, it would be the signal light improvement part that would be the last piece of this project that would need to be done. And that's actually what we're waiting on. What the change order in front of you is for is basically the uh, big, biggest expenses. Uh, when we started working on the turn lanes for 43rd and 45th Street, we discovered that the slabs out there were bad and we went ahead and replaced them with concrete. And when we excavated out the concrete, we also discovered that the sub base underneath that was, uh, was also failing. So we had to go down uh, considerably deep with aggregate base and then with the concrete. Uh, this change order, uh, that's in front of you actually had an overrun because uh, we didn't uh, do the milling. We discovered that the base out there on 43rd and 45th were adequate, so we just went ahead and overlaid on top of that existing base out there. So the overrun on it uh, was 51,000, and the underrun uh, that we had uh, for asphalt removal and unstable base uh, where we actually didn't use it uh, netted a change of $19,888, which is the change order that's in front of you. That is a 2.8% increase in the total project price, and that is in the budget. Uh, if you'll remember, we had $800,000 to work with. Uh, that was a foundation and an EDA match for the funding. So we do recommend approval, and I'll try to answer any questions if you have them. Move for approval. Second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor, <coughs> excuse me, Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. <laughs> the motion passes. Item number four, please. Consider approval of change order number two to contract with Cook Construction in the amount of $69,018 for Boston to Denver Street sewer line replacement or take other necessary action. Mr. Stewart. So, yes, Madam Chairman and committee, this is a change order. Uh, this is part of the Northeast uh, sewer project, and this project was uh, given about a $6 million budget. It had several hundred thousand dollars in it in contingency. So uh, we were able to use that contingency money on the first change order that came before you, and that was doing some extra sanitary sewer repair over on Dorchester and Haskell Boulevard where some lines failed. The change order in front of you today is for a line that runs north and south between Boston and Denver between Kendall Boulevard and 11th Street. So we have 800 feet or 600 feet of eight inch sanitary sewer line over there in that alleyway that has failed. And this uh, Northeast project will allow us to go ahead and do a change order so we can move from the major sewer work that we're doing on the Northeast part of town and include this sewer line that's over in this area. It's a, uh, it's a block long through that alleyway. The uh, change order uh, will actually be to uh, uh, do some fence removal and it's to replace a concrete drive 
And again, it's for uh, 600 feet of eight inch sanitary sewer line. And this is in a very tight area. And we're gonna do a slip lining process where they'll go down and just slip line the existing sewer line. And then they'll have to reconnect the uh, service lines that are over there, which are all included in this price. So the change order is part of the Northeast uh, uh, project. It is part of that contingency money. It is available, and by the way, it will still leave us quite a bit of contingency money in there if something else comes up. And we did check with Oklahoma Water Resource Board, and they told us this was an acceptable project. Answer any questions, but recommend approval. I just have one question on, you said the change order will be up to $5,351? The uh, total project price for the Northeast Zone sewer is five million. This change order is actually for not near that amount, but $69,018. So the change okay. order is uh, as part of your agenda item title, list the price up there. That's the original. It's a $69,000 change order to the $5 million Northeast Zone project. Okay, thank you. Move for approval. Second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Tracy McKee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jarek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. And the motion passes. Item number five. Discuss the 2021 meeting schedule for City Council, Public Works, and Finance Committee as per City Code 2-20 and Council Policy 1-2 and provide necessary direction to staff. Mr. Miller? Yes, hello. Um, uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee, um, we uh, do this every year. It's just one of those things that we uh, take care of business and we uh, generally have our council meetings second and fourth Mondays of the month at 530 and then we have public works and finance first and third Mondays of the month. Um, even we usually have them at, at city council chambers. I know there's been some discussion among uh, the group about uh, having a discussion about um, not necessarily changing the times, but looking at a location change uh, for next year, possibly even considering the Civic Center. Um, and so I wanted to open that up for discussion. Um, I do feel like we do have good protocols in our uh, council chambers to try and social distance, uh, and we are set up for multimedia there, uh, but that is entirely up to the discretion of the city council. Um, we do have a requirement to, uh, to make those before the end of the year, set our meeting schedule for next year. And so that's really what this is about, is to see if we just want to adopt what we've always done and uh, maintain good social distancing and meeting council chambers on our usual days. Uh, and if so, we make that recommendation here in committee and then we can approve that next week. Uh, otherwise, it's open for discussion for the council about what you guys want to do for your meetings, about where you want to have them and when. Do we have any discussion from the council? Do we want to keep it at the same? I like it how it is. So uh, if on down the line, Mike, that uh, we run into some uh, problems as far as uh, gathering in the chamber, are we able to change it at that point if we get down uh, later in the calendar? So we can, uh, we would have to have special call meetings to have anything other than these meetings. And so if we decided in the future that we needed to have them at a different location, um, we can do that. We did that for some of our street committee meetings, for instance, this year. Uh, we moved the location to uh, a place they could spread out more. Um, so it is a possibility if we if we adopt the, the, uh, the usual strategy, but in, in the future want to uh, to have special call meetings instead uh, at a different location to allow for more social distancing. Um, that is a possibility. Um, there is also um, the uh, state legislature has said they will consider taking up um, amendments to the Open Meetings Act to allow uh, remote participation to be more uh, to be easier um, uh, as it was earlier this uh, early this summer and fall. Um, and if that's the case, uh, that would also allow for social distancing regardless of the venue. Uh, but that is uh, proposed and discussed that they will, uh, state legislature will, will reinstate those old rules or something similar. I think they're looking to tweak it, um, but they may or may not do that. Okay. Mr. Chair, uh, Madam Chair, 
Um, Mr. Miller, this is the mayor. I, I believe that uh, to also answer uh, Deputy Mayor Reed's question, that as long as we announce a particular meeting in enough time, uh, where that location is, we don't have to have a special call meeting just to address that. It could just be as part of the agenda as long as it's announced in advance. Ten days, Mayor. Ten days, yeah. With that being the case, uh, Madam Chair, I would like to make a motion that we accept uh, the calendar for the year 2021 as printed as well as with the uh, meeting places to remain as is. Thank you. Is that all right? Second. Second. Madam Board Chair, discussion? yes. Um, we also need to recognize that in December, we only have uh, public works and council, and then we don't have any other meetings the rest of the year. So I want to be certain that, that, that whatever motion we made just now, that doesn't add two additional <coughs> meetings to the calendar. So, Mayor, the last meeting would be uh, December 13th, okay. and that would be of 2021, and that would be a council meeting. Yes. And so uh, approving it the way that we have the last few years would effectively cancel uh, the public works finance meeting of December 20th, and then a subsequent council meeting on the 27th. That's fine. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Roll call, please. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. That concludes our agenda. We had no one sign up to speak, so we are dismissed from our agenda. We will now call to order the special call meeting for the Muskogee City Council for today, December 20th, uh, December 7th, 2020. Roll call. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Here. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Here. Ivory Van. Jamie Stout. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Here. Alex Reynolds. Here. Stephanie Morgan. Here. Tracy McGee. Here. Tracy Hoos. Item number one. Consider approval of resolution number 2842, amending the City of Muskogee, Oklahoma municipal budget for fiscal year 2020-2021, providing for additional revenues to be transferred to the special project fund in which to pledge said revenues, and further amending fiscal year 2021 general fund budget or take other necessary action. Mr. Miller. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is uh, the time of year that we uh, usually do this, and so um, we have a, a mid-year budget uh, adjustment uh, and special projects fund usually this time of year after we close out the, the fiscal year of, of uh, 2020. Um, but this year we have a few things that are different. So we've got some caveats for 2021. Um, we're going to do our annual special projects fund like we usually do. And then we're going to also this year we've got to factor in um, our CARES Act money from COVID-19 and how we allocate our reimbursement for costs that we've already incurred there. Um, we also have a general fund budget adjustment. As you recall, we made our budget early in the spring. It's a lot of uncertainty, and we said uh, once we have a better grasp about how COVID-19 is going to affect our budget, we will make an adjustment, and we are able to do that at this time. We also have a compressed timeline um, that we're dealing with this year, uh, and, and you guys are, have, uh, have helped me with that, and that's why we're having a special call meeting tonight. So. We'll go ahead and, and look at our usual graphic just in general about our budget uh, that has uh, we always try and keep that red line of our expenditures below the blue line. Um, we had a few years where we didn't. And so the council made a policy very wisely um, creating uh, the special projects fund and also adding money to the reserves. And so uh, they did that basically to set up those two purposes one to build those reserves up and one and uh, secondly to allow us to make uh, special one-time expenses that fit the council strategic priorities at this time of year and so um, we've been able to do that um, in, uh, this year and in general uh, the best practice is that we keep 20 to 30 percent of our general fund in a reserve uh, when we started this we only had 10 and so we have made great progress thanks to this council and this mayor and, and the council of mayors over the last couple of years to make a lot of progress to get us towards the bottom level of, uh, of a best practice. And so we're almost there. Um, and what that allows us to do then is to take uh, some money and put it into the stabilization fund. This year we had uh, revenue over expenses of about $295,000, uh, which is good um, considering uh, the, exactly what was happening in April and May and, and some, uh, so many businesses shut down. 
Um, they were at less than 20%, so we moved uh, uh, about $220,000 into our uh, reserve, and the rest of the money uh, goes into our um, account for the special projects fund. Uh, let's talk more about that, uh, we're going to talk about the CARES Act as well. As you recall, the Muskogee has spent um, several million dollars on CARES Act and COVID-19 related expenses. Uh, we've been reimbursed uh, more than two or slightly more than $2.8 million. Um, we've expended about 400,000 on non-payroll related expenses. And so uh, we're, the budget uh, proposal that is before you uh, allows us to keep another 400,000 or so related to uh, future COVID-19 expenses um, that are non-payroll related. And then it allows the council to uh, appropriate the, uh, the reserve or the rest, uh, the balance of that $2 million as part of, uh, as part of this program. Um, we look at the annual budget for the general fund. Uh, we projected a 10% reduction in sales tax and we have had uh, a much better year than we anticipated. So that allows us to revise our revenue projections to about $1.5 million being more uh, available for our mid-year appropriations, which you guys are doing now. So how, we uh, tried to put together a budget with strategic priorities in mind. And so the council had, to, you guys had to retreat and you've given us lots of direction over the, the course of the last year. The top priority you identified were infrastructure and facilities and maintaining the bones of the city and keeping those running well. Uh, you identified public image, uh, economic development and housing as large priorities. And then public safety and employee morale as very important issues that you wanted to address financially. And so we're gonna start off talking about employee morale. This uh, budget amendment does three things. Um, one is it allows a stipend for every employee uh, that was uh, that worked the entire uh, fiscal year 2020. Uh, so that basically Ju July 2019 to June 2020. Um, this is how we've done our stipends out of this budget in the past. It allows us to reward those employees that helped us have a good year financially. And so we've given stipends in the past. We've never been able to do one quite this large. And it's, lar it's larger in part because of, uh, or to a large degree, because of uh, COVID-19 and the CARES Act. Uh, because of uh, that reimbursement, we're able to put that money to our employees who've been operating under a higher level of stress than they have been in other years. Uh, so it's uh, important to know this is $1,000 pre-tax. So, you know, some people are in different tax brackets, some people have different, different withholding. They're all going to get a $1,000 gross uh, in, uh, under this proposal. And this is uh, most of the employees, about uh, between 370 and 380 of our employees will qualify uh, just some of our newer employees want. Um, it also lets us uh, allow raises for uh, employees that are not in uh, the police department. Police department contracts allowed for steps and uh, uh, translated to about two and a half percent. We weren't able to do that for the other uh, in employee groups and this allows us to kind of catch them up uh, beginning with raises starting on January 1st. So. Um, it also allows us to do, uh, in lieu of our Christmas party, kind of expand that and have uh, Christmas food baskets with a, a turkey or a ham uh, and be able to distribute those uh, in time for the holiday season. So um, again, early in the year, other cities were doing uh, you know, layoffs, furloughs uh, and cuts. We did not have to do any of that and the council was wise uh, to be conservative and now we're able to reap the benefits of that by helping our employees because we put ourselves in a good financial position not just this year but the previous year. Um, uh, the next in, uh, major priority was related to infrastructure. Um, here are some of the projects that we're going to work on, uh, capital projects, uh, automatic locks for parks, uh, up upgrades at the payment center for security cameras, uh, Swim and Fitness Center, uh, improving the dehumidifying equipment out there is the sore need uh, of replacement. We're going to look at uh, helping our facilities, the Roxy Swim and Fitness Civic Center and Martin Luther King Center that have had a shortfall in their proposed, in their uh, revenue. Uh, and we want them to be on strong footing when this uh, COVID-19 ends. Um, we want to uh, also have money available for animal shelter equipment, um, especially related to um, more humanely dealing with uh, animals 
uh, uh, at, the, at the animal shelter, and then transparency and budgeting software, uh, which we understand is a great way to help not just the council do their job, but the citizens understand how our money goes uh, and how it's spent. Um, public image was a very high priority, and uh, three of the highlights there are uh, a, uh, allowing extra money for um, uh, hotel demolition on Highway, 30, uh, Highway 69, South 32nd Street. Um, we've got uh, one of those that is in, in need of, of demolition. Um, should it get through the final stages of the process, uh, and then uh, should, it, uh, should the uh, owners not do it themselves, this will allow us to, to take care of that and help clean up the Muskogee, allow some beautification money, and then uh, a council proposal was to promote Muskogee with a PR campaign about how livable it is. Not necessarily why it's a good place to build a factory, the port does a lot with that, not necessarily why it's a good place to come visit, you know, tourism does a lot of that, but about the day-to-day -day things that make Muskogee great. And so we'll put together a scope of work and, uh, and put that out for, for bid and try to get uh, somebody to help us put that together. Public safety, um, we're looking to build a police department, a, a fence around the parking lot uh, for the police department uh, for security purposes. Uh, we're going to help them put some money towards a replacement of their, uh, their special operations team vehicle. Um, we'll not necessarily pay for it in a lump sum, but we'll give us uh, a lot of progress towards it. Likewise, a lot of progress towards building uh, a new fire station number five. Um, we're looking to work with the county to help uh, the 911 center dig out of a, a financial hole related to um, their capital expenditures uh, and try and get them uh, up to speed and that's a, a way for us to partner with them and, uh, and uh, additional funding for emergency management as we deal with uh, COVID-19 uh, and still the aftermath of the flood from last year. Um, some other projects that kind of fit, they could fit infrastructure, they could fit tourism, they could fit economic development. Um, Hatbox arenas are pretty much uh, pretty much done, but what we do, do need to still work on is the parking out there. Um, this allows us to do that along with livestock fans and bleachers to have additional events like drag racing and like the livestock shows that we've been able to have. Again, once we feel comfortable having those kind of events, we want to be ready to hit the ground running. Um, housing incentives and economic development, uh, another key area. Uh, so this is money set aside for those. And uh, we also have downtown uh, tourism and economic development, uh, specifically some related to Depot Green and other areas um, specifically related to Christmas. Uh, we've got the money in to try and get some Christmas lights, uh, additional Christmas lights for downtown, brighten things up uh, and bring some holiday cheer. Uh, and then Depot Green, the new outdoor event space, and we want to just have um, funds available there to uh, program that site. It's a new site. We do want to encourage outdoor activities, uh, especially in this time. And so that gives us the money for that, that venue to get up and operating and, and running. So these are just a few things to kind of say in conclusion. Number one, not very many cities are able to do this right now. And the council, uh, all of you, the mayor, um, deserve a whole lot of credit for putting us in the position where we can do that financially. Also, a lot of credit needs to go to our staff, all of our department heads that, that uh, try to pinch pennies and budget wisely through the year. Um, uh, especially, I want to thank our finance staff, Dean and Marcy, I want to thank Kelly, uh, and Tyler Evans, who helped us on, uh, a lot on our reimbursements to make sure that we've got the funds available to do these kinds of things. Um, everybody's doing that on top of their, their real job. Uh, and um, I'm very proud of our staff. I'm proud of your staff. Um, I hope this, um, this proposal uh, echoes the, the strategic priorities that you guys have put forward. And I do want to thank you again for putting us in a position where we are able to do something that most other cities can't. Uh, with that being said, um, staff recommends approval, and we'd be happy to answer any questions. Mr. Miller, this is uh, Mayor Coleman. The question I have is that the uh, how much money are we putting aside to replace the police uh, vehicle for in this fiscal year? Uh, one hundred. I believe that's one hundred and fifty thousand. And what was the total price to get it? It is uh, a little bit under three hundred. Can, so I'm assuming that we're going to allocate the balance to purchase that vehicle in the next fiscal year because I'd, I'd like to see that done as soon as possible considering that the mm -hmm. vehicle that they 
are using is the equivalent to a broken tank. Uh, and it's, I don't think it's very safe. So, you know, we can. No, uh, it, is a, it is a high priority, Mayor, and that's why uh, we've got it. I've talked with, uh, that's why, and, and I understood that to be so, and that's um, why it's on the list. Um, I'm going to work with uh, the police chief and see how fast I, I, how fast we can get it done. Um, and I do think this is a, it goes a long way uh, towards getting it there. So we'll yes. so we'll be certain in the next uh, fiscal we, year. We can either uh, if, if we're not able to buy it next year outright, we would be able to finance it with a huge lump sum uh, down payment. So that's fine. I just uh, want I to be sure huge, that this is a huge step in the right direction. Yes, that's so fine. I just from, yeah. So. I just want to be sure it didn't get drug out. No, absolutely, and, okay. and I, I, I'm glad you pointed it out. The, uh, some of these things are. are helping us achieve a goal not all the way achieving the goal we're not we're not buying the whole fire station we're not buy, we're not uh, but we're getting a strategic priority accomplished uh, in a better and faster way do we have any further discussion from the council or motion to approve move for approval second it's been properly moved and second any other discussion mike let me take this opportunity before we do the roll call to thank you and your staff uh, certainly, we are grateful for the effort and energy that you guys put in to being certain that you did an amendment that reflected the priorities of the council as they reflect the priorities of our residents. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Roll call. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. The item passes. Item number two. Consider an executive session to discuss and take possible action on the following. A, pursuant to Section 307B2, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes. Consider convening an executive session to discuss negotiations with the Fraternal Order of Police, Lodge Number 95, and if necessary, take appropriate action in open session. B, pursuant to Section 3. 07 B2 Title 25 Oklahoma Statutes consider convening an executive session to discuss negotiations with the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, Local Number 2465, and if necessary, take appropriate action in open session. C, pursuant to Section 307 B2 Title 25 Oklahoma Statutes, consider convening an executive session to discuss negotiations with the International Association of Firefighters, Local Number 57, and if necessary, take appropriate action in open session. We need a motion to go in executive session. Move for approval. Second. Second. And probably move in second. Roll call. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. We will now convene into an executive session. I'm going to ask that the persons who do not need to be in that session, if you excuse yourself from council chambers at this time. We will now reconvene will now from executive meeting. session. Roll call. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Here. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Here. Special effects. Mr. Miller, can you still hear him? Hang up on him. <laughs> All right, it's been nice knowing you guys. That's okay. Okay, we'll, we'll start over. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Here. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Here. Ivory Van. Jamie Stout. Here. Evelyn Hibbs. Here. Alex Reynolds. Here. Stephanie Morgan. Here. Tracy McGee. Here. Tracy Hoos. Mr. Tucker. Uh, yes, Mayor. Uh, item 2A, pursuant to Section 307B2, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, the City Council did convene an executive session to discuss ongoing negotiations with the Fraternal Order of Police Lodge Number 95. After being briefed on the status of those negotiations, I believe an appropriate motion would be to approve authorizing the city manager to negotiate and execute a memorandum of understanding with the Fraternal Order of uh, Police, Lodge Number 95, based upon the parameters discussed within executive session. Do we have a motion? Move for approval. Second. Second. Roll call. Tracy McGee. Here. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I meant yes. 
Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Oh, you know the thing. Yes. <laughs> Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. The item passes. That is the last item for tonight. We are adjourned. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We've still got a B and C. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so item 2B, pursuant to section 307B2, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, the council convened an executive session to discuss negotiation with the American Federation of State, County, Municipal Employees, Local 2465. After being briefed on the status of those negotiations, I believe an appropriate motion would be to approve authorizing the city manager to negotiate and execute a memorandum of understanding with the American Federation of State, County, Municipal Employees, Local 2465, based upon the parameters discussed within executive session. We have a motion. Move for approval. Second. <laughs> Roll call. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Mr. Tucker. Item 2C, pursuant to Section 307B2, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, the Council convened an executive session to discuss negotiations with the International Association of Firefighters, Local Number 57. Based on the status of the nego negotiations, similarly, I think an appropriate motion would be to approve authorizing the City Manager to negotiate and execute a Memorandum of Understanding with the International Association of Firefighters, Local Number 57, based upon the parameters discussed in executive session. Do we have a motion to approve? Move for approval. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Roll call. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Mr. Tucker, is that the last one? That is the last item. <laughs> that is the last item for the agenda tonight. We are adjourned. Thank you. Wow.